Hello, this is Carlton with The Good Job and welcome back to another video on building The Good Job YouTube channel. This is part two. Um, this is a, a video where we're going to take you along our journey and us building our Good Job channel. And our goal in doing that is to become a YouTube partner, part of their partner program. So what we're going to do is just share with you our journey and hope that you can learn something in the process of us going through the building of the Good Job YouTube channel. So what are we going to cover in part two? Well, we're going to cover a, no a number of things. One of the things is that we're going to talk about the decision making realities that we had to face. Um, and there are a lot of decisions that you are going to have to do. And we're going to share some of them with you. Um, also, we're going to talk about uh, going to YouTube school. We had to learn a lot of things in order to build our channel. And we're going to share some of the things that we learned um, that you you may benefit from as well. Also, we're going to talk about the seven ways to make YouTube videos. We discovered a number of ways that we could make videos and we're going to share with you the ways that we discovered. Maybe one way is better than another way. So whatever um, way that you think is best, you go ahead and we're going to share with you what we thought was best for us to make videos and why. Um, okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the YouTube video making tools. We needed a number of tools in order to make our videos and we're going to share with you the tools that we used in order to make our YouTube videos. Um, we're also going to talk about posting videos to the channel, some of the things that YouTube requires as you're posting, some of the things that you need to do or to consider or decide on when you decide to post videos to your channel. We're also going to talk about the stats that we had from August to December 2018, some of the things that we did um, that you probably should avoid um, for 2018. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about making more decisions. You know, after we go through learning things, we have to make more decisions. Now, if you did not see um, part one, what we did cover in part one is that we talked about what is good job. You know, we also talked about why we started our YouTube channel. And then we also talked about what research we did to get started. And then we talked about what happened the first month um, when we posted videos. So it's just kind of a story and a journey that we're going through and we're sharing it with you in hopes that you're able to look at it and glean some information from it if you're going to be doing it yourself so that you will learn and won't have to make some of the same mistakes that we made. Okay, so one of the things about creating a um, a YouTube channel that you have to do that we found is that we found that we have to make decisions upon decisions upon decisions. That is the most time consuming thing that we found in creating this channel, like deciding what kind of logo you're going to use, deciding what kind of videos you're going to put up, deciding what kind of brand you're going to be, deciding, you know, what kind of uh, graphics you're going to use and what kind of description you're going to have for your YouTube channel. Everything requires a decision. And if you um, suffer from the paralysis of analysis, meaning that you go back and forth and back and forth and try to decide something, you're going to get really frustrated and creating your channel. Or if you are somebody who makes snap judgments, then having to go back and correct them, you're going to get frustrated as well. So one of the things that we had to do is that, okay, how are we going to make decisions? So I had to find out for myself, how do I make better decisions? Decisions. And so one of the things that I did was I did some research and I went to Psychology Today and I looked up and found an article that said five tips for better decision making. And I liked the article because it talked about, you know, how you should slow down in some areas, you should take your time, you should decide a little bit later. It's a balanced perspective for somebody like me who suffers from the uh, paralysis of analysis. Um, I am going to put a link to this article in the description area um, below if you want to look at it yourself. Another article that I looked at was from The Muse. It was four ways to get better at making snap decisions without feeling guilty. This was great for me because sometimes I'm a perfectionist and I want things done right. And so I'll just keep going back and, and making sure that it's done correctly. But what I've learned is that you can't always do that. Sometimes what you have to do is just do a snap decision and then not feel guilty about it. Um, also too, I will put the 
um, link to this article in the description area below. And also one thing that really helped me was this book, Decisive, How to Make Better Choices in Life and Work. What I learned is that it's okay to make mistakes and move on because then you can get better at it. And if I learned that if you uh, keep trying to be a perfectionist, then what's going to happen is that you're not going to get any videos done. You're going to keep working on one and working on one until it's perfect. And you know what? It's never going to be perfect. So I really like um, what this book taught me. And again, I'm going to put a link to the description. Um, I'm sorry, in the description area where you can get this book if you so choose yourself. Okay. So now one of the decisions that we had to make is that we had to make what is the decision of what is the good job channel going to be about like what is good job and a lot of people really don't know about it so we have to figure out how do we tell the world what good job is about and so the thing that we had going for us is that we already had a website and we know that our website was about career development so when we were developing our good job brand we knew that it was going to be a career development brand and branding talks about who you are what you do and why you do it and so we know that um, good job is a career development brand now one of the things I want to share to you um, if you are going to be building a brand that you have to have some branding considerations not some things that you need to think about as you're going to build a brand so ask yourself this question ask yourself what do you like to do now, if it's something that you're going to be building a brand about that you have to spend a lot of time developing this brand. And if you don't like to do it, then you're just going to frustrate yourself or you're going to be doing something that you feel you have to do instead of that you like to do. And at Good the Job, we really like talking about career development. And we we are volunteers, as you probably if you looked at the first video, you see you've seen that we've done tons of volunteering for 25 years or more for thousands of pe thousands of people and we really do enjoy that and that gets into what are you good at if you not only like to do something but if you're good at it meaning that you know you can do it and you can get results it's like a mechanic going to a mechanic who likes working on cars but that they actually can fix cars if you like it and you're good at it then that those two by themselves are branding considerations the third consideration is what do others say you're good at now you could like something and you could think that you're good at it but if nobody else say that you're good at it then you might not want to brand that for yourself because it'll be a short-lived company or something so um, get feedback find out what others say not your relatives or your friends or people who you pay to like you but people who don't even know you if they say that you're good at it then that is a branding consideration the other thing is what comes easy easy or natural to you now if you're good at something and others say that you're good at something but you know you it's it's frustrating for you to figure it out you got to just you know push through it then it may not be easy or natural to you like if you're a mechanic and you know you hear a car fluttering you go hey, hey you know that's your alternator or alternator or whatever it is I'm sorry I'm not a car person so you know and I respect people who can work on cars and fix things you know and do construction I think they they are just they're great but if it's something that comes easy or natural to you that you can do it without thinking then that is a branding consideration because you could really build a brand upon what comes easy or natural to you all right another consideration is that what do you do that blesses others now something can come natural to you you can be good at um, but if nobody gives you a feedback like hey I really appreciate the help that you've given me. you've really helped me it's you know it's something that I really you know I, I'm, I really benefit from you know when we do our um, free career development uh, trainings and then after the training somebody either gets a job or they get a promotion or they're able to make extra income or they're able to build a business and get their business to the next level when they come back and they say to us you know this was really helpful you know or we, we've published them a book and then we get the feedback when someone says this is the best book I've ever read you know that is what we feel that blesses somebody else and that is something that you can really build a brand on and then finally you know at, are the end results fun to you meaning that at the end of the day when you do something to help somebody else 
and it blesses them, it becomes easier and natural to you and you're good at it and you like what you do, do you look back and go, wow, that was a ton of fun. I really enjoy doing that. Do you get a kick out of it? Is it a win-win situation? Now, if all these things are yes, if you have an idea of what you like to do and that you're good at and you know this in your knower, that is an excellent branding consideration because then you can take that and you can build a brand and people will follow you because you have these things taken care of. All right, so when we were deciding on our Good Job channel, we had to ask ourselves, you know, what are we gonna use this channel for? Are we gonna use it for just promotional things where we're going to send people back to our website and promote our website? Or is it gonna be informational? We're just gonna share tools and, trip and, uh, and uh, tricks and strategies and things like that to people? Or are we gonna monetize our YouTube channel? What, what are we gonna do? And the answer to all these questions were, Yes, we absolutely, we're gonna do this. We're gonna monetize it. We're going to promote it. We're gonna give informational things with it. This was is our goal for our YouTube channel. And you are following us through this goal. And so one of the things that I had to consider in, and since this was our goal, is that I had to go back to school, which meant that I had to go back and learn a lot about, you know, building a YouTube channel. I had to learn a lot about how to grow a YouTube channel. I had to learn about how to monetize a YouTube channel. And I felt that if I could spend three hours watching a ball game or three hours at a movie, that I could spend the time it took to learn how to grow, to build, to monetize our Good Job YouTube channel. And that is something that you need to consider and make a decision about is that, are you going to spend the time to do what it takes to learn how to do this right? And the answer to that should be yes. In going to school, I decided to go to YouTube school, which meant I went to the Quick Start Guide to YouTube. Um, directly at YouTube from the YouTube creators. What I'll do is that I will put a link to this page in the description area below so you can take a look at it yourself. And what I like about it is that it talked about, you know, welcome to YouTube, the basics, you know, how to brand your channel, and then some policies and guidelines, things that you really need to do. It became the foundation of me um, going to, to YouTube school. And so one of the things that they had me do is that I needed to set up a, a Gmail account and I did that for a good job. And once I set up my account, then I went to YouTube, I clicked on my channel like I'm doing here, and then it asked me to put in my name. So I went ahead and put in my uh, name. And then after I did that is that I clicked the create channel. And once I click create channel, I was faced with a number of decisions that I had to make. And so one of the decisions is what was the channel icon was I going to use? And so because we had a website, we just decided to use the website icon. It was easy for us to decide that, but you're going to have to make that decision for yourself. The other thing I had to decide in building my channel from scratch was um, what was going to be the banner or channel art that I was going to use that everybody would see my channel if they're going to subscribe. The other thing was the trailer. What, you know, the 60 to 90 second trailer are you going to use so that when people came to your channel, they would see what your channel is about. This section for us was about branding. And then the other thing is um, the description about your channel, where you're gonna have your links and some information about your channel. Now, the good thing about all of this is that YouTube told me that I could change this at any time. So even though that you had to make a decision, you could actually change it at any time. So I went back to YouTube and went to their YouTube help. And there's a link for that, which is here. And I will put a copy of that link in the description area below. But what I like about going to YouTube is that they had uh, videos and instructions about things like how to manage your channel icon. That's where I learned that I could you know, replace my icon and, and talked about the size of my icon or about creating and editing your channel art. Now, now the banner for us was kind of a huge thing and because we created um, the banner in Microsoft Word first, um, but it didn't really work out that way. Um, and so what I decided to do after I went to YouTube is I um, went and put in 
in the YouTube section is that how to create um, a YouTube banner. And so when I did that, uh, a number of videos came up and I took the one from Justin Brown and I watched it. And Justin Brown gave a lot of good information on how to create a YouTube banner. And the uh, program that he suggested was one that's called Snappa. And so we used the Snappa program and in Word when we did it, it took us a couple of hours to figure it out. But in Snappa, it took us a couple of minutes literally so my suggestion is go to YouTube first go to YouTube school learn about it and then go to the YouTube community by putting your information into the search area and then search for whatever it is that you want and you will discover a lot of videos that gives you a lot of other ways to be able to build your YouTube channel after the banner art, the most difficult thing is making your YouTube videos, especially if you're going to make a video for your channel trailer. Um, for me, the decision to make the icon was pretty easy to do. The description was pretty easy. It took a little work to do the channel art, but making the videos <laughs> were actually the thing that was most time consuming and required the most decision. And so there were seven ways that we looked at in making the videos that videos that we tried. Now, there are other ways to do it or other programs to use. But for us, um, there were seven that we went through to try to figure out, okay, what would be the most efficient way to make videos that would um, describe our brand and our channel. And so the seven ways that we looked at included um, use someone else's video. Believe it or not, YouTube does allow you to use someone else's video. The second thing was to get a freelancer to do it. And we actually did hire freelancers to do some of our videos. The third thing is to wing it in front of a camera. Hey, if you have a camera presence and you can do that, then that there may be advantage for you to do that. Also to use free screen recorder and video editor software. Um, and there's some advantages and disadvantages in that as well, which we will talk about. Number five is to use the Camtasia program. It's a program that would allow you to record and edit videos right in one program. Um, number six is to use PowerPoint and put it into Camtasia. And that's something that we did as well. And then number seven is to use Audacity. It's kind of a voice recorder and then put that into Camtasia. And that's something that we did as well. So let's go ahead and get into um, each of these videos. So number one, you can actually use someone else's video and how you would do that or how we did that um, at first is that we went and put in a topic. For example, we put in career development. And then once we did that, we went up to the area which said filter. We clicked on filter and over to the right, you click creative comments. And so when you click creative comments, all these videos are videos that people would allow you to reuse. So I'm going to click on this video career development. I'm going to scroll down where it says show more. And when I click on that, if you scroll to the bottom, you would see ah creative comment. The license is that reuse is allowed. And so the advantage of using someone else's video is that you can build a channel very quickly. You can just take someone else's video. You can post one, two, three or four videos a day as recommended by the uh, YouTube influencers. You need to post a lot of videos today. You can get a lot of watch time. Um, and But the disadvantage to that is that if you're building your own brand, then the videos may not really reflect your own brand and you may not get the number of subscribers that you want. So, but you know, you can use other people's video. In fact, this video that you're watching is a Creative Commons attribute license video. If you want to reuse it for your channel and say, hey, good job said I can use their channel, I may have at it. You know, you can use it anywhere that you want. This is a creative of comment video and you have a free license to be able to use it. The second way to make a video is using um, freelancers to do your videos. Um, you could use Fiverr.com to look for a freelancer to do your video. Um, you can also go to Upwork.com to look for a freelancer to do your video. Um, or you can go to freelancer.com to look for 
uh, a freelancer to do your video and actually we use all three of these the advantage to using a freelancer to do your video is that you can get some really cool videos you can have somebody else do that part of the work if you're not an expert at it or you're not proficient at it while you are doing something else like you're doing some scripts or you're doing you're writing some information uh, about a description whatever you can be doing another part of your channel while somebody else is doing the freelancer part and in fact when we were doing our channels or the uh, the videos for it we um, were doing a um, free uh, career development training and we had a couple of people we were training them how to be freelancers and we said to them hey you know if you become freelancers you know and you sign up for one of these programs we will hire you to do some videos for us and that's what happened the downside of it is that it could be very expensive you can see here we spent $250 for um, one video 500 for another 500 for another um, and it can be very expensive but we thought it was worth it since we were training people to become freelancers and we decided decided to hire them as well so that is number two on how you can um, actually create some videos now number three is that you could get in front of a camera and you could wing it like these YouTube tubers are um, the advantage of this is that hey if you are personable or we have something about you that is that it's attractive to somebody in one way or another you can create a lot of videos and people can start liking you you know for the things that you do or you say so that's a good advantage um, of if you want to wing it in front of the camera and also if you uh, have are somebody that um, has a camera presence where you are able to uh, um, guide people through things or give them instructions or show them, show them something that's really different. People are visual. They like to see things in motion. The downside to that is that if you are not a camera person, you may come off as somebody um, who is not very good and your channel will just die. So that's another um, way to be able to uh, make videos. Now, number four is that you could actually use a screen recorder, mean that you would um, find a free download recorder software. You would use it to record your screen. You can even put a video insert in there. Um, what's good about this is that the um, the screen recorders are free and so they give a list there's a video called the top five free screen recorders and I'm going to put a link to this actual video in the description area so you can watch it yourself and so they give you the top five free videos here and then you can see them demonstrate some of these videos this is the ice cream screen um, ice spring free cam the open broadcast software the Vita shadow play and smart pixel screen recorder Order. Again, I'm going to have a uh, link to the actual video where they show you a little bit about how to use each one of these um, if you want to use a free screen recorder. In addition to that, you're going to have to have a way to edit the recording that you do. And so there are um, top five video ed editors that go along with that. And again, I'm going to take this video, this is an actual video. I'll put the link to this video again in the de description area. And it gives you recommendations as to uh, Lightworks is a good video editor. It's an open shot, uh, shortcut, a hit film express and davinci resolve and they go over you know just a little bit of examples of how to use each one and that's really good to have and again the pros of it is that it's free the con of it at least for me is that you need one free software to do the capturing of the video and another one to do editing and so you have to learn how to use both of them and they're upgrading all the time a lot of them are free and then if you want to use some of the most um, advanced tools you may have to pay for it so you know there's some trade-offs and so what I want to go to is number five and this is a way that we use and that is actually using a uh, Camtasia we use the Camtasia 2018 version now there's a video that's five ways to use Camtasia I'm going to put a link to this video in the description area below and so what I like to do is that I like to be able to use Camtasia because I have both the recording and the editing in one place and so and if you're using Camtasia there's a couple of ways that you could use it. Let me just show you one way to use Camtasia. One of the ways that, that um, I've used Camtasia before is that if I want to get snippets of a number of different um, 
um, free videos or those videos where there are Creative Commons ones, then I can just go up here to the record area up to the um, left. And then I could, um, I'm gonna move my record button over here. Then in the search area, um, what I could do is I could just go to click here and I can put in a topic like career development motivation. Then I could use a Creative Commons one. I can click the filter button. I will choose Creative Commons. And then all the rest of these videos are videos that I could use with no license restrictions. So if I choose one of them, I can record it for you know a few seconds or a few moments. And this is really how people, um, people who do the um, you know the the compilation videos. A lot of them would use a program like Camtasia, get all of the Creative Commons ones, and then just put them back to back to back. Okay, I'm, let me just uh, use a few seconds of this one. I'm gonna choose pause. I'm gonna go back and find another video. And these are all Creative Commons. I'm going to un. I'm gonna resume, and I'm gonna choose this one for a few seconds. And people choose it for longer. Um, then I'm going to go back for another one. Oh, let me click uh, pause. And then I'm gonna go back and let me scroll down and look for another video to include. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, hey, yeah, so I'm gonna choose this one. And then I'm going to click my resume button and then Camtasia is recording another section of this video. Then I'm going ahead, I'm gonna stop this. It's gonna go back to Camtasia. I'm gonna click on play and look, you can see, so I've, all of these videos that I've captured from back to back to back, I, I am making a compilation of this. And if you see a lot of compilation videos, people who use recorders and editors use compilation videos, especially when they use a lot of the Creative Commons videos. Okay, so that is Camtasia. Let me just go ahead and stop that. Um, and then the next thing that you could use Camtasia for, um, if you don't wanna use it directly, is that I like to use it with PowerPoint. And for example, I have a very simple um, PowerPoint presentation. And the reason why that I like to use the PowerPoint is because you can do a lot of your editing, your animation, your transitions right here in PowerPoint first, and then transfer them over to Camtasia. So let me just do an example of this. I'm going to go to where it says the add-ins section here, and it has a Camtasia add-in with a click record. And as I'm doing the um, presentation, and I'm going to go ahead and go through it, um, it's actually being recorded in PowerPoint, and then I could transfer this over into Camtasia. So let me just go ahead and run this um, presentation, just three slides, I'm just, and I'm doing the animations here right in PowerPoint. So once I'm done, then I can click the stop recording. Uh, let's see, I am going to put it in the PowerPoint, I'm gonna click save, I'm gonna click okay here, and then boom, there it is. And then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna drag it right into my timeline and toward the bottom. And then I can actually just go ahead and click no. I don't need any point slides. And then when, when I'm playing it, there it is in um, Camtasia. Now the red lines around here is because I'm recording it as I'm playing it. So you won't see the red lines, but look what it's doing. It's actually um, showing my video that I made in PowerPoint and have all the animations in there as well. So this is what I really liked doing from PowerPoint to Camtasia, and there it is. And so now method number seven is that we're gonna actually use Audacity to create our voice first and then actually get it into Camtasia. And the reason why that you may wanna do this is because you may hire somebody to do a voice or you're more comfortable and doing your voice recording first and then you want to add graphics on top of it. So when I use Audacity, I'll just start by opening up the program. I'll just go ahead and click OK. I'm going to make sure I'm using my Yeti mic and I'll just click here to make sure my vocal levels are OK. When I'm ready to record, I just click this record button here and then start my recording. Hey everybody, this is me. We're gonna talk about people today and people are wonderful and we love them. Now I'll go ahead and click stop. I'm gonna to go to file and I'm gonna choose export audio. So when I do that, I'm gonna just give it a name, test one, click save, and then click okay here. Once I do that, I'll just go to Camtasia, click this plus sign here and choose import media. I'll choose my audio file here that I just created, click open, and there it is. Now I'll bring this down, 
to one of the tracks and then I can see if I can hear it. Hey everybody, this is me. We're gonna talk about people. Okay, so that's good. Now, once I have my audio track there together, now I can put on top of that either some graphics or some video. What I like to do is that I like to use a um, site that's called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. And here it has a bunch of high definition free photos and videos. And then I can just download them. I can just see if I want some photos, I'll download this one. Um, I will find another photo of people. Since we're doing about people, I'll download this one since it's for free. Um, I will find, let's just find a third one. I'll just find a third one. How about these people here? I'll click this, I'll download this, and then I'm done. And once I do that, then I'm, I'll go ahead and go back to Camtasia and I will go back to the plus sign, choose import media. I'm gonna look at my downloads here. Those are the three files that I selected. I'll just go ahead and click open. They are there and I'll just drag that to my area where I'm going to select three of them, put them here right next to my audio. Um, okay, and there they are. All right, one, two, three. And then once I play it, I not only have... Hey everybody, this is me. We're gonna talk about people today and people are wonderful and we love them. So there it is. That is how I use Audacity with Camtasia. Okay, so those are the seven ways that we actually have used to create videos for our Good Job channel. And so right now, we primarily use number six, the PowerPoint to Camtasia, because you know we want to add some graphics, we want to add some training, to some videos, and so we like that method, and it works for us. You need to decide what method works for you. So you're going to need to put in the time to search, you know, try different methods, see which what is a bet best fits your style and then just run with it and no matter what method you use you are going to need some tools and be able to develop your um, your um, YouTube channel videos so I want to suggest that you would check the description area below we put some links in there if you want to get the Camtasia program you can actually have we have a link for that if you want to get the audacity program we have a, a link for that as well and we have links for other things that you may need if you're going to actually wing it and, and stand for a camera you gonna need the, the right camera to use the right lighting the right microphone I use a Yeti mic for this so um, you should uh, look at the tools that um, I've used and other YouTube influencers have recommended for you to use all right so now what I want to do is I want to show you um, again this we had this in step one I want to show you the um, two videos that were posted on um, that we have posted on our site. So here's the two videos that we had initially uh, on our site. If you went to our channel, you'd probably actually see these videos. And then what I also want to do is I want to share with you. Let me see if I can find it and bring it out. Bring it up. The statistic that we had for the first couple of weeks after we posted these videos. Now in step number one, I did share um, this graphic, and I'm gonna go ahead and get it for you and find it for you. Because what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to be discouraged because when you first post your videos and you put them up you you want them to go viral but usually if you have a brand new channel that's not necessarily going to happen and so up oh, okay I got it together there it is now in these two videos for the month of August we've had uh, 25 minutes of watch time and 12 views and no subscribers and so we just actually just posted the video and kind of left it there while we went to look at other methods of creating videos and we did not know that I was going to take you know such a long time to be able to to figure out which method that we're going to use to create the videos so that was um, and from August uh, in 2018 well after that then what will happen is that we um, for the rest of the year um, we had 417 minutes of watch time 284 views and no subscribers now if you will notice is that in September we posted two more videos 
um, how to become more valuable and how to add value free download. And in December, we posted one video, which is more effective to do list. So there is this gap, you know, at the, in, in August through December. And so a lot of people want to know, like, what happened here? You know, in this gap, you know, why, how come you don't have views or subscribers? Well, for us, we went back to training. We went back to figure out how, what is the best video method. We did a lot of training um, to figure out, you know, how to you monetize a channel. And so we did not post any videos in that time period. And so what YouTube influencers say is that if you don't post videos often, you're not going to get the watch time, you're not going to get the views, and you are definitely not going to get subscribers. And this is what happened to us here. You know, we didn't post many videos. We would just spend a lot of time doing the paralysis of analysis, trying to figure things out, um, you know, among ourselves. And so we, we didn't do anything and it just died. So at this point, we had to make a decision and it's just like the decision that you're going to have to make when you actually start this channel and then you're going to get discouraged because it's not blowing up like you're seeing every, everybody else's channel blow up. No, you got can't worry about that. And so the decision that we had to make in December is that we have to figure out what are we going to do from this point on. And so what we had to do was decide um, to dedicate time in building the channel. The channel would not grow unless we would dedicate time to building it. The other thing too is that we have to spend time making videos. If you don't spend time making videos, your channel is not going to grow. I mean, it goes without saying, but a lot of people want to put up a few videos and hope that it goes viral and that uh, isn't uh, what's going to happen necessarily. Maybe a few people, maybe not. We also had to do is that we had to spend time learning how to grow the channel and that meant to watching other YouTube video influencers and how they grew, grew their channel. So we have to spend time with that. And number four is we have to spend time learning how to become a YouTube partner. Now, I know that YouTube says that, you know, you need to have the uh, 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of um, watch time. And so if we are going to be a YouTube partner, like this is that we had to make sure that we spend the keyword is T I M E and that's time. So that's what we had to decide in December 2018. So in the next video, which is be part three, we're going to cover a couple of things. What happened? Number one, we're going to cover getting our first subscribers and yay, how happy we were in that. We're also going to cover uh, working on video SEO, meaning how do you walk through with SEO? You hear a lot about it, but how do you actually do it? We had to learn that ourselves and do it for our videos. And then that actually helped us a lot. Also, we uh, explored running $5 a day YouTube ads and what that did for us. And so what we'll do is that we'll share with you the video influencers who helped us with a $5 a day YouTube ads and we'll share with you the results. Also, we'll talk about um, the stats for January 2019. So you'll be able to chance to see, you know, what effect uh, all these things had on us um, in January 2019. And January kind of started some of the growth for us. And then we'll share with you what we went through. Okay. So right now, I just want to say thank you very much and for being a part of this journey with us. And so if you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and like, share, and subscribe this video so that you would be able to get notification when part three comes out. We would love to share that with you. Thank you so much. And let's just go ahead and enjoy the journey. Take care.